These days, GM offers a Camaro for everybody, from the V6 to the SS packages on the street, the killer ZL1, the new handling package back here called the 1LE. But today, we're looking at the badass drag racing package called the Copo Camaro. Now kind of the bummer is we're not going to get a chance to drive the car down the track because GM hasn't even released how quick it is yet. In fact, they won't even tell us exactly the horsepower that these things make or even how much they weigh. But what we are going to do is talk to some of the guys who are the insiders who built these cars. We're going to show you where they assemble them and take you inside a dyno room within GM. In 1969, Chevrolet dealer Fred Gibb figured out how to trick Chevrolet into building the car they never really intended using a process called the Central Office Production Order, which was COPO. And what he did is he took the all-aluminum 427 cubic inch engine that they were running in Can-Am and had it put into the 69 Camaro for drag racing use. And now here is the first Copo Camaro since 1969. A pure drag racing car built by the factory to go heads up in NHRA stock eliminator and super stock drag racing against the other factory drag packages. This thing is pure race car. As a matter of fact, the factory eliminated the independent rear suspension and went with a solid axle. That's a strange nine inch hanging on a four link. Back in 1969, the Copo Camaro was actually a production vehicle. You could license it and, and put a plate on it and drive it on the street. The 2012 Copo is really a, a all-out race car. It doesn't have a VIN number, it has a serial number, you can't title it or register it. It is literally the first race car that Chevrolet has brought uh, to, uh, to the drag strip for consumers to purchase. We're now moving forward with production for this car and we're going to build a total of 69 cars in 2012. Copo Camaro will be available with three different engine options for a variety of stock eliminator drag racing. First engine is a 427 naturally aspirated motor. The second is a 327 based on the LSX block with a 2.9 liter supercharger. And the third engine is a 327 LSX engine with a 4 liter supercharger. Right now we're inside the Wixom powertrain plant for GM and it's just an awesome facility with CNC machines and guys doing amazing things with computers that we've never seen in the aftermarket. They build all the Corvette GTP racing engines here and also all of the Copo race engines will be assembled here. But the thing that's really cool is the Copo car itself was really born right here on jack stands built by the hot rodders who work here at Wixom. They did a lot of this after hours and pushed the whole concept uphill at GM and made it happen right there. And I think that's really cool. Now we're at one of the engine dyno cells here at the Wixom powertrain plant. And there's a 5.3 liter Copo engine on the dyno, one of the small blower ones. just amazing data collection here. Check out the infrared screen up there so they can see the heat map of the engine while it's running. That's badass. Yeah. This is pretty cool. This 69 Chevelle was built a few years ago for a story in Hot Rod. It was actually a cover story where we took every single performance parts crate engine and put it in the car to see how fast it would be in the quarter mile. And now they're using this car for Copo development. It's got the 427 engine in it right now. And this engine essentially has all of the same bits that our production Copo engines will have, like the tunnel ram intake manifold, uh, the ATI damper, and uh, the American Racing stainless exhaust headers, uh, the cylinder heads that will have uh, you know, some special work for Copo only use. Now we're next door at GM's Performance Build Center, and the thing that's really neat here is we found out that each engine is assembled by one worker, start to finish. And normally these guys are building Corvette engines for the ZL1, Z06, and Grand Sport, but now they have an even more radical project. 
kind of transitioning now to a little bit higher performance levels with the new Copo Camaro introduction, where we'll be hand assembling the Copo Camaro long block engines. Uh, there's also the opportunity with these engines to hand assemble them yourself with a customer build experience. Wow. It's mic proof. <laughs> Even I can't screw that up. This thing tightens all the cylinder head bolts at the same time and even torques them to spec. No, it speeds things up and creates a better clamping force. I don't even want to go home and build engines anymore. <laughs> it takes way too long. Wow. We need one of those. It's torque angle too? After all the handwork is done, we checked out some really awesome machinery that test runs every single engine they build, and then they move it on to this balance cart where they run the engine and it shakes on this table and they're able to dynamically balance the thing right there before it goes out and gets stabbed into a car. So that was our visit with the new Copo Camaro. They're going to be delivering those cars in late June and you'll see them on the drag strip this summer. While we were in town, Chevy also let us drive some of the new and wicked Camaros that they've got for the street. The one that you probably have heard of is the ZL1. And what's interesting is ZL1 was the name for that all aluminum 427 back in 1969, but this new car doesn't have an all aluminum 427. As a matter of fact, it's a 6.2 liter. It's supercharged, it makes 580 horsepower. Chevy's big deal with the ZL1 is actually handling. They've been bragging about Nurburgring performance, but we wanted to run it on the drag strip. The weather didn't let us really thrash on it, but we did learn about this bitchin' feature, which is a factory drag racing launch program. You set the thing up and all you have to do is floor the gas, bring it up on the rev limiter and dump the clutch and the traction control takes over with an optimal launch that is designed for the drag strip by GM at the factory. So cool. And finally, there's the latest Camaro, the 1LE, which is a handling package. Basically, they took all of the great suspension components off of the ZL1, not including the magnetic ride shocks, and applied it to a regular Camaro SS. They also made this trick blacked out hood just so that you would know it's a 1LE. And here's a friend of Hot Rod Magazine, Al Oppenheiser, who's the engineer in charge of the whole Camaro program. And he knows how to do a burnout.